Good afternoon, everyone. This is James from Dividend Stock Talk, where we talk about dividend stocks and investing for weekly and monthly cash flow. As you can see down here in the lower right-hand corner, it is 5.35 p.m., January 8th. Happy birthday, Elvis! 2021. We're going to talk about what we've done so far for the first week of this year. Open up our account, and this is what we're looking at. First thing I want you to notice right down here, so everybody knows we're on the same page, it says paper money simulated trading. What does that mean? That means for over 10 years, I practice and I practice and I practice. LeBron, uh, Pippen, Troy, Aikman, uh, oh, all the other ones, uh, Larry Bird, uh, Michael Jordan, everybody has a coach, everybody has practices. Practice, practice, practice until you're perfect. Even if you're perfect, you still practice. Hmm. Larry Bird and Michael Jordan, the greatest the basketball players ever, but they practice. So this is my practice. You can look over my shoulder, see how everything works. <clears throat> Bitch morning complain that it's not real. However, all the numbers are real. The opening of the day is what it is. No matter where you look, it ain't gonna change. The high of the day, the low of the day, the volume, all the numbers are same. The trading strategies are all valid trading strategies. Now, let's quickly look at what I've done so far this year. Now, we're only in January 8th, and the first company we're looking at is AFG, which is, let's open it up, AFG. AFG started out the year at uh, 107, quickly made a high at 113, and then it must have hurt really bad to drop all the way down to 42. But anyway, it's the low of the at 42. Jumps into a trading range between, what is that, uh, 55 and 70 for about seven months. And we're back over here in the new trading range of 84 to 90. AFG is of American Financial. <clears throat> now, we jumped into AFG on, here we go, click up here on the 5th and we bought the 8385 spread now the 8385 spread it's only a two dollar spread so the most i can make on this trade is two bucks however as long as the stock stays above 85 on the day of expiration which is next friday i will make the money in which i want on this particular trade now as you can see now it's at 9106 so can it go below 85 yeah it can but the odds and probabilities of it going below 85, not really. Besides, if you look over here, AFG, well, I'll open this up, has a dividend coming out in the next couple of weeks. So as long as it has a dividend coming out in the next couple of weeks, we are going to be just fine. All right, go on to trade number two. Trade number two is APA, which I believe is Apache. Let's put it in, APA. <clears throat> it is Apache, here we go. Apache started up the year at 32, quickly made its high at 33.65, and then this one I had heard also from 36 all the way down to, what is that, 362? Ouch, that hurts. Okay, so anyway, 362, she bounces off the bottom, finds a training range between, what is that, a lot of 10 and 15. And at the moment, she's at 16.58. We jumped in at, uh, we jumped in on the 6th, which was two days ago. We bought the 15 call and we sold the 15.50 call, which is only a 50 cent move. That's all we're looking for, a 50 cent move. As long as it stays above $15.50, we are gonna make money. And look at this. She closed today at 16.58, which means we made money on APA. Caterpillar is the next one on the list, C-A-T. Caterpillar started out the year at 147. Took a couple of months to find the low at, at 87. But now, here's one everybody would love to jump in on from 87 she shoots up to 194 or 196 is the high that's a 200 percent increase in less than a year that's awesome but anyway that's not what we did 
we're only here for weekly cash flow. So we just buy it and out, we're out within five days, most of the time. Every once in a while, we have to carry a little bit longer. But Caterpillar, we jumped in and what did we do for Caterpillar? Caterpillar was a covered call. If you only know anything about covered calls, where you buy the stock and you sell someone else the option of buying it from you at a certain date. Now, we only do weekly trades here on this trading platform that I'm sharing with you right now. So we bought <clears throat> Caterpillar at 192 and then we sold the 192.50 call. So I bought it for 192.94 and I'm selling someone the option of buying it from me at 192.50, which is less than what I paid for it. Why would I do that? Well, here's the reason why. For the privilege of someone to buy it from me for 192.50, they paid me $2.64 per share. Okay? Now, I only had 500 shares, so that's a little over a thousand bucks. So I lost a little money when I sold it for 92.50, but I bought it for 92.94. So the amount I lost is compensated back by the premium I collected on the call. So I'll quickly show you what I mean by that. Considering it, uh, wow. Well, here we go. Hold on. I need to get to the right one that I'm showing you. Here we go. Caterpillar, it's, I put this alphabetically so you can see exactly where we are. Caterpillar, we see a T right there. So granted, I sold it for less than I paid for it. However, I still made $1,000 for three days. Okay? So I bought it for 192 or let's go back to where it was because I can't really remember. <laughs> when you get old, you can't remember stuff. All right, Caterpillar. <clears throat> back here where were we okay here we go okay so i bought it for 192.94 and i sold it for 192.50 but i collected the two dollars and sixty cents 64 cents per share option premium so i still made over a thousand dollars even though i sold it for less than i paid for it that's called a covered call and the only reason i did that because caterpillar has a dividend coming up in two weeks i'm going to get to that in a minute and i'll explain to you why i only invest in the dividend uh, companies. So that takes care of Caterpillar. Now let's take a look at the next one on the list, which is CL, Colgate Palmolive. Just for a little tidbit of information, Colgate Palmolive is a dividend king, which means they increase their dividends for a minimum of 50 years just to be on that list. And they've been around for over 100 years, so they're one of the companies I love the best. All right, so uh, Colgate Palmolive started out at 68.71. Um, Took a couple of months to find the low of the year, which is 58. From there, it's a nice move up to the high of the year, which is 86. She settled in a little trading range between um, 84 and 86, and that was for about a month and a half. But she, uh, when I jumped in <clears throat> here on the 5th, she opened up lower the next day, then lower, then lower, and I actually lost money on this trade for this week okay so we bought the 83 calls and we sold the 83 and a half and we sold the 84s but the stock had to stay above 84 in order for me to make money this dropped below 82 so I lost money on this one now in all my books and some of my videos and even on my blog you'll say you'll you'll read it or you'll hear it me say it all the time Nobody wins them all. Get used to that fact, and if you have a hard time losing, don't play the game. Okay, the next one we're looking at is COG. COG, but on another note, before I close out the, the uh, Colgate Palmolive, Colgate Palmolive does have a nice historical um, track record of moving up. So we are going to get into uh, uh, Colgate Palmolive next week. Um, so we're looking at COG, which is Cabot Oil and Gas. Started out this year um, at 1697. Took about a month or two to find the low at 13, and another couple of months to find the high at 22. And been in a trading range of 16 to 18, even as high as 20 for the past couple of months. 
Now, capital oil and gas, we jumped in there at the 17 costs. So we we bought the 16 and a half, so we bought the 16s and we sold the 17. So as long as this thing stays above 17, we're gonna make money on 50 contracts. Now, 50 contracts doesn't sound like a lot, but that's 5,000 shares, okay? Now, she's closed out at 17.27. So we were right, so we actually made money off of that one. Now, COG, let's take a quick look and see what we actually did. All right, for three days, it was a $1,600 return. Not bad. Let's go back to our list. And uh, COG, now we're looking at CVS. CVS is another good company. It's been around for quite a while. Let's take a look at what they're doing. CVS started out the year at 72. Didn't take long to find the high of 70, what is that, 76. Couple of months, found the low at 51. And then got into a trading range of, what is this, uh, 58 to 67. And but the last couple of weeks, she's been jumping up. Now we bought on CVS. We bought the uh, the 70 call and we sold the 70, 50 call. Again, 50 contracts, which again controls 5,000 shares. Uh, as long as the stock stays above $70.50, we'll make money on that one. As you can see, that one worked out very nicely. Thank you very much. Um, EOG, that's next on the list. EOG. Okay. EOG resources. EOG started out at 89. Okay, from 89. Now this one, again, this one had to hurt. 89 down to 27. Hmm. Low of the year 27 back in May. Oh, March. Sorry about that. Uh, trading range between 39 and 57. And we jumped in. Oh, what are we looking at right here? Okay, again, another uh, another covered call. We bought 1,500 shares at 57.98. Okay, and then we sold the 58 call. If you look at the time right here, we, we bought EOG at 10.43 and 45 seconds. And we sold the call at 10.44 and 20 seconds for a grand total of, uh, ooh, we paid 84 cents. Oh, well, sorry, we collected 84 cents for that one. So we made money on that one because it did um, close above the 58. Now we also bought the 56 calls and we sold the 5650 calls. So as you can see, things definitely closed above 56. So what did we do on EOG? Let's quickly go look at that. EOG, EOG resources, eh, it was only 1500 bucks, 1575. All right, so let's go back to who's after EOG. EOG is Lowe's. Now Lowe's is another dividend king. Lowe's, L-O-W, here we go. Lowe's started out the year at uh, 119, quickly dropped down to 61. Now this is a nice, if you would notice this thing back in March, it went from 61 up to 181 at the end of October. Uh, sorry, the middle of October. That was nice. But all right, she's been in a trading range of uh, that 147 and 164 for the last couple of months. And here's where she is now, around 165. And we got jumped in at lows. Here we go, jump in today, look at lows. Another spread trade, the 155, 157. So as long as it stayed above 157, we're good to go. And as you can see, she's at 165 today. So yeah, we made money on that one. And I love those trades. The uh, spread trade is my actual fa favorite is trade. Favorite. Okay, the last one on the list for this week is Procter & Gamble. Another dividend king. Gotta love that. Uh, started out the year at 122. Took a couple of months to find the low of the year at 94, and then had a nice steady growth to a trading range of, uh, what was that, 135 to 145. The last couple of weeks, she's been right in the 130, 140 area, and we jumped into Procter & Gamble to, where are we, where are we, where are we, here we go. 
for the 138, 139 call. So as long as she stayed above 139, we made money. Now, I'm going to have to admit that I slacked on this one because had I paid attention, I could have gotten in and sold it before it closed at 138.79, and I could have made some money off of it, but I lost money on that one too. So let's look at Procter & Gamble. We only lost $114 on Procter & Gamble. However, considering I had the spread, let me bring that back up again to explain this to you briefly. <clears throat> Considering I had the spread of 138, 139, I bought the 138s and sold the 139s. So I lost the money on the 139s. However, come Monday morning, I will be the proud owner of 1,900 shares of Procter & Gamble at 138. So as you can see, even though I did pay for the spread of... Um, Procter and Gamble. I have the privilege of buying it at 138, which is lower than the close of today. So I may have lost $114 on this trade, but it puts me into a position where I can do a covered call first thing Monday morning. I could hypothetically just sell it at whatever the opening is, and anything over and above 138 is going to be pure profit, minus the 114 that I lost this week. So that will go into next week because I did lose money this week, but next week I'm going to make up for it because I'll be in possession of 138 shares. I mean, I'll be in possession of 1,900 shares at 138. Now, why did I buy these shares? Why did I buy these stocks? Let's jump over here to what's called the Market Watch. Now, the Market Watch allows you to take a look at the market on overall position and find out what is happening in the stock market that affects the stock price. Now, stock price is affected by two reasons and two reasons only, a known, reason, a known event and an unknown event. An unknown event is perfectly, um, example of an unknown event is the Capitol building st being stormed the other day. Nobody knew those people were gonna storm the Capitol building and do that kind of crap. That is an unknown event. Now, I don't like trading those because you never know when they're going to happen. There may have been a few people that knew they were going to do that, but not everyone. Now, if you look at this calendar here and you know anything, right here, CM, CSA, that's Comcast. Comcast pays its dividend on the, um, on the 7th. Oracle, MasterCard pays its dividend on the 8th. ACN, ABX. ABBV, um, Lowe's, Clorox, Ford, CVS, Clorox. These companies have all posted that they're going to pay their dividend. And does the stock react to a dividend being paid? Yes, it does, because a lot of people want to buy a stock just to collect the dividend. So it's an artificial move, but in actuality, it's really not because you got a lot of people jumping in to buy it. And that's what has the uh, the stock move up coming into the dividend play. That's the only one I really do because that's the only one I can control. And I'm not looking for a lot. I'm just looking for a small amount. You got a dividend coming up. I want to see how the, the stock reacts to the dividend. I want to jump in. I want to collect that dividend or something, some type of profit so I can get in, get out, and be profitable. So back to where we started again. So as I said from the beginning, we start out the beginning of the year, which is January 1st, at zero. Okay, the account started out with $100,000 and we have profit and loss year to date so far of 7,647, which if you do the math, you'll find that that is a 7.6% return for three days. There was no trading on the first, no trading on the second. I jumped in on the, I think the first trade I did was the fifth, wasn't it? Yep, right here. First trade I did, Ozark. Oh, by the way, that's not right. Okay, let's quickly take a look at this. Here's all the orders from the very first one, which was Ozark, buy to open 3,000 shares, to the very last one I did, which was EOG yesterday. This is every trade I've done so far, and this is all the fills. So when it gets filled, this is what you bought. The green is the buy, and the red is the sell. So. So if you go from the very beginning, the very first trade we bought was Ozark, A-Z-K. 
Now again, they had a dividend coming up, so we bought in, we collected the dividend, and we moved on. Uh, 3,000 shares, right here's the buy, and right here's the sell. So we bought it at 31.92, which was the opening of the day, or close to the opening of the day. And we ended up shell selling it at 32.19. Granted, it's a lot, not a lot of money, but let's take a look at exactly how much that was. So Ozark right here. All right, so that's $810 for, what is that, a couple hours? Where's Ozark? Okay, we got in at Ozark on 1-5, which was 9.44 in the morning. And by the time 12.30 on the very same day, we were out. In, out, same day, $800 profit. Okay, RPM was the second trade that we make, 9.46. Okay, we bought 1,000 shares. And we were out by 9.53 on RPM. RPM, how much did we make on that? RPM, right here. All right, 360. Big deal. Anything else on the fifth? Um, we got a spread for AFG, which we're still at the moment. Oh, here's one right here. Cody, 5,000 shares. We bought that also on the fifth. At 9.57, um, Cody, we were out at 12.47. See that? Cody, buy in the green. Cody, sell in the, in the red. The time, 9.57, we're in. We were out at 12.47. And what kind of profit did we make on Cody? Uh, 1700 Not bad. Okay, so anyway, that's basically the way I trade. Uh, next week, we're going to be doing uh, trades first thing in the morning, um, and we're closing about in the afternoon. So if you want, you can join us. Watch the trades that I do. Zero over my shoulder. Yes, I realize this is just a practice account, but if you actually want to continue doing this and looking at them and understanding why, you can actually do it yourself. So with that being said, this is James checking out. And we will catch you on Monday where all these figures right here are going to change. And you will probably only see maybe one or two positions. You're going to see AFG. I know that much. And more than likely, you're going to see Procter & Gamble. I don't know if anything else is going to be there. We won't know until Monday comes. I try not to spend too much time on this. 10, 15 minutes a week is usually what I like to do. Or 10, 15 minutes a day while I'm teaching you. My own account is only 10 or 15 minutes a week. While I'm trading you, it's about a half hour a day. But... I'm trading, not trading. Anyway, you guys have a great day, and I will catch you manana, which for you guys is going to be Monday.